So good morning everyone, this is Navi Christi T. Mallorca and today we will talk about the principles of staining in our subject histology which is in the chapter 16. So let us discuss first what is staining. So staining is the process whereby tissue components are made visible in microscopic sections by direct interaction with a dye or staining solution. So, most cells are colorless and transparent, kaya histological sections have to be stained in some ways to make cells visible para makita ang cells kasi our cells are colorless and transparent. This means it adds color and it makes or it helps the medical technologist to identify more with what's inside or or to look more for what is the components of the cells so staining in this method a colored compound is used to produce a contrast between different tissues and cellular components based on their varying affinities for most dyes and stains it is important why because through this the, mo the morphologic changes are more easily identified, classify uh, physical physical characteristics and the structural re relationships of tissues and their cells will be evaluated. By this process, the um, presence and the absence of disease can be established. So, let us proceed on the paraffin sections. So, paraffin wax is poorly permeable to staining solutions and should therefore be removed from the section prior to staining. So, first is the fixation muna, diba, when we are going to stain tissues. So, paraffin wax are usually done by uh, so, the sample must be immersed first with the paraffin wax or, or I mean, in the paraffin section, which would, we would be using saline. So, the duration of this is 1 to 2 minutes and it will be done for 2 times and each first section up to 10 micron thick. Silin is not miscible with aqueous solutions and low-graded alcohols and should therefore be subsequently removed with absolute alcohol followed by descending rates of alcohol to prevent damage and detachment of section. So in histopathology, paraffin wax is used for embedding surgical specimens. So this hot liquid wax is dispensed into a small tray and allowed to cool a specimen is placed into the cooling wax in the desired orientation so in this technique um, the issues are fixed and in embedded wax this makes the tissues hard and much easier to cut sections from so the sections are stained and examined with a light microscope so for the histological staining it is the process whereby the tissue constituents and general relationships between the cell and tissue are demonstrated in sections by direct interaction with a dye or a staining solution, producing coloration of the active tissue component. So, microanatomic stains, bacterial stains, and specific tissue stains, which examples are muscle connective tissue and neurologic stains, fall into this category so histologists have developed many stains which are suited to particular purposes this allows cell structure to be differentiated so why it is important because remember that the color of the stains are not the real color of a particular tissue and that a structure that appears as one color using one stain may be quite different color using another stain. So here are the methods of staining. So first is the direct staining. 
Direct staining is a process of giving color to the sections by using aqueous or alcoholic dye solutions. In simple or direct staining, only one dye is used, which is washed away after 30 to 60 seconds prior to drying and examination. So, in direct staining, the molecules that make up basic dyes have a positive charge. It is important because the cell wall and cytoplasms of bacterial cells have a negative charge. So, kumbaga, i-attract niya ang ano, diba, dip, different poles attract, do attract. So, uh, the positively charged dye would be attracted attracted to the negatively charged cells. So, it will enhance the ability of the stains to stick to and color the cells. Methylene blue is a classic example of this stain. This blue stain will color all the cells blue, making them stand out against the bright background of the light microscope. So, for indirect staining, It is the process where the action of the dye is int intensified by adding another agent or more than. So this serves as a link or bridge between the tissue and the dye to make the staining reaction possible. For the indirect staining, the stain may only weakly, if at all, the more than combines with a dye to form a colored lake which will turn combines with the tissue to form a tissue mordant dye complex that is rendered in insoluble ordinary aqueous solution. So, an accentuator, or on the ha other hand, is not essential to the chem chemical union of the tissue and the dye. It does not participate in the staining reaction, but merely accelerates the reaction. So, some of the examples are the potassium hydroxide in Louis-Ferris methylene blue and phenol in carbon thion and carbon phosphine. So, for the progressive staining, this process is where tissue elements are stained in definite sequence. So, it, it is stained by sequence and the staining solution is applied for a specific period of time or until the desired intensity of coloring of the different tissue element is attained. On the other hand, the regressive staining is a technique where a tissue is first overstained to obligate the cellular details and the excess stain is removed or discolorized from unwanted parts of the tissue until your desired intensity of color is obtained. For the differentiation or discoloration, this is a staining procedure where selective removal of excess stain from the tissue during regressive staining in order that a specific stain, substance may be stained distinctly from the surrounding tissues. So, this proce procedure differentiates or distingu distinguishes between types of bacteria. So, it is ap applicable for bacterial cells. So, it is termed as differential staining. On the other hand, differential staining methods impart a distinctive color only to certain types of bacteria in some techniques. So, for the differential staining, only one commonly recognizable use of differential staining is the gram stain. And the gram staining uses two dyes, which is the crystal violet and the fusion or the saffronine. And to differentiate between the gram positive, which is which has a large peptic doglecan layer on the outer surface of the cell, and the gram negative bacteria. So this uses more than one chemical stain to better differentiate between various microorganisms or structures or cellular components of the single organism. Those chemical 
I mean, it is stated that it uses more than one chemical. As I've mentioned earlier, the crystal violet, the fusion, or the safranine. So the differential staining differentiates gram-positive bacteria fr from the gram-negative bacteria. So let us now proceed with the metachromatic staining. So this type of stain is where most dye stain tissues orthochromatically, example in color shades that are similar to the color of the dye itself. So the metachromatic staining techniques entails the use of specific dyes which differentiate particular substances by staining them with a color that is different from the stain itself. So the tissue components will combine with this dye to form the different color from the surrounding tissue. The metachromatic staining is particularly employed for staining cartilages, connective tissues, epithelial mucins, mast cells, granules, granules and amyloid. For the metallic impregnation, impregnation, this process is where specific tissue elements are demonstrated, not by stains, but by colorless solutions of metallic salts, which are thereby reduced by the tissue, producing opaque usually block deposit of the surface of the tissue or bacteria. So the specific tissue elements demonstrated is not by stain but by colorless solutions of the metallic salts so instead of using stains nagagamit siya ng colorless solution ng metallic salts so which are thereby reduced by the tissue producing an opaque usually blood black deposit on the surface of the tissue or bacteria so for the vital stain or the vital staining, this type of method is a selective staining for living cell constituents. So it is demonstrated by cytoplasmic structures by phagocytosis of the dye particle or by staining of pre-existing cellular components and in the staining of mitochondria by the genus green. For the vital staining, um, it is excluded only for the living cells, but taken up by the already dead cells, as in vital staining or reticular endothelial system with tripan blue or propidium iodine for eukaryotic cells. So the usual purpose of this is to reveal the cytological details that might otherwise not be apparent. So, however, staining can also reveal where certain chemicals or specific chemical reactions are taking place within cells or tissues. On the other hand, the intravital staining for the living cells is done by injecting the dye into any part of the animal body, so either intravenous, intraperitoneal, or subcutaneous, specifically producing specific coloration of certain cells, particularly those of the reticular endothelial system. So the common dyes used for this are lithium, carmine, and India ink. For the supravital staining, this method is used in micro in microscopy to examine the li living cells that have been removed from an organism. It differs from intravital staining, which is done by injecting or otherwise introducing the stain into the body. Those that enter the stain living cells are called the supravital staining. Example is the neumethylene blue and crystal crystal blue for reticulo reticulocyte staining. So, th so those that enter and stain living cells are called the supravital staining. However, these stains are eventually toxic to the organism, some more than others. 
partly due to their toxic interaction inside the living cell. So, when supravital stains enter a living cell, they might produce a characteristic pattern of staining different from the staining of an already fixed cell. So, to achieve the desired effects, the staining are used in very dilute solutions ranging from 1 is to 5, 5,000 or to 1 is to 50,000. So, you have to note that many stains may be used in both living and thick cells. Thin slices of tissues are placed in small staining dishes and enough staining solution is added to cover the tissue. So here are some of the common dyes that is used. First is the neutral red, probably the best vital dye. Second is the Janus green, especially recommended for the mitochondria. Third is the tripan blue. One gram of dye is dissolved in 100 ml of sterile distilled water to be used immediately. Kasi it is dan dangerous to allow the suspension of the stand for more than one hour because it is likely to become toxic to the cell. So the fourth is the nine Nile blue, fifth is the cyanine, and sixth is the tolodine blue. For the hematoxylin and eosin or the H and E staining, so it is the cornerstone of a tissue-based diagnosis. This process of staining is used in thin, thin tissue sections. So this helps the pathologist visualize the morphology of the tissue. The process uses a hematoxylin dye to the stain, to stain the cell nuclei or even the other parts of the cells and blue and eosin dye to stain other structures which is pink or red. So the hematoxylin binds strongly to acid and consequently binds under nuclear DNA and stains nuclear blue. For the routine H and E staining in paraffin embedded sections Regressive staining. For fixation, most fixatives can be used except the osmic acid solutions which inhibit hematoxylin. So this is the, the procedure of routine H and E staining. First, you have to clean the paraffin embedded sections in first saline bath for 10 minutes. Second, you have to transfer it in the sidene bath for 2 to 3 minutes. Thirst, third is you have to immerse in first bath of absolute ethylene, ethyl alcohol for 2 minutes. Fourth is to transfer a bath of 95% ethyl alcohol for 1 to 2 minutes. After that, you will rise it into the running water for about 1 minute and stain it with Harris alum hematoxylin for 5 minutes. Seventh is to wash it again with running tap water to remove the excess stain. So to differentiate in 1% acid alcohol and for 10 to 30 seconds you will be going to do that. Then you would going to monitor the changes in color microscopically until the nuclei are stained. So the ninth is you will rise it into the top water and for the tenth is there would be blue in ammonia water which is 1% aqueous lithium carbonate until the sections appear blue. Eleven is you will go into wash it again with running water for at least five minutes. Twelve um, it would be counter stain with 5% aqueous eosin for 5 minutes and if alcoholic eosin is used, the time can be reduced for at least 30 seconds or 1 minute. Thirteen is if aqueous eosin is used, you have to wash it and differentiate it in top water under microscope, microscope control until the nuclear appears sharp blue to blue black 
and the rest of the tissue appear in shades of pink. So if alcoholic solution is used, differentiate with 70% alcohol. Lastly, you have to de dehydrate it and clear and mount. For the frozen section staining, the frozen section mounted on the slides may be stained as in paraffin sections, although the duration of staining is usually shorter. So the sections may be mounted in an aqueous medium directly from water if necessary. So here are the process. So first is the hematoxylin asin method. Second is the cyanine method. Third is the polychrome methylene blue method. And fourth is the alcoholic phenocyanol method, which is used also for supravital staining of the mitochondria and primarily for the color synthesization in photography. So for the H and D staining of frozen sections for a rapid diagnosis or the progressive staining, this is the procedure. First is orient section in the block and freeze with liquid nitrogen. Second is two, it will be cut into the chirostat section at 5 to 10 micron. It would be mounted into the sections on two album albuminized slides and dip it with 10% formalin in order to be fixed. It would be then rice with rapid water and stain with Harris hematoxylin for 30 to 45 minutes. I mean seconds. And then it will be rice with the tap water followed by blue in ammonia water for 5 seconds and rice again into the tap water. So the counter stain with 5% aqueous eosin or 1% alcohol eosin for 1 minute. Then is it will be rise in tap water. Eleven, it will be dehydrate in increasing concentrations of alcohol. Twelve is clear with saline, and thirteen mount with a cover slide. So for precautions in staining, Stains on the skin should be avoided not only because there are signs of poor technique but because stains are health hazard per se. So, it is very important that you should wear a PPE or the, the the personal protective equipment because Aside from it would, um, aside from it would be seen as a poor technique if you are messy with your work. It is also hazardous with our health, so it is very important that we should wear PPE when working in the laboratory. So, being slowly absorbed by the skin and eventually producing side effects, stain may be effectively removed from the skin by prompt topical application of 0.5 acid alcohol followed by rising with tap water. Pero if, ano, if hindi man siya naiwasan or hindi naman siya nasadya, for example, natapon yung, yung stain sa skin mo, what would you going to do is you would be rising it with tap water and you have to remove it in your skin. I first have to remove it in your skin using 0.5% acid alcohol and would be followed by rising with a tap water. So for the colloid, colloid, colloid ionization of sections, the paraffin ribbons containing air bubbles, torn or inadequately infiltrated sections are likely to flow, float 
from the side when they paraffinize and stain they are more fir firmly attached by coating the side slide with dilute thin colloidine solutions as a process known as colloidionization which is also recommended for the sections that will be subjected to strong alkaline or acid solutions and for tissues that contain glycogen and for demonstration so for the procedure of this colloid ionization section first you have to deparaffinize it with the silene the sample second it will be dehydrated through absolute alcohol third you have to dip individual slides in coplin jar, coplin jar that contains dilute ether alcohol solution fourth is you have to dip in dilute ether either ester solution of siloidine, thin siloidine, and fifth, you have to hold the slide on one end for one half to one minute and drain it until the section begins to whiten around the edges. Six, wipe off the block of the slide, the back of the slide, and place in 80% alcohol for three to five minutes to harden the siloidine. 7 is stain as desired so for the restaining of old sections old bleach or faded sections may be restained so the slide is usually immersed in silene for 24 minutes or gently heated until the mounting medium begins to bubble the cover slip may then be removed by lifting it with a dissecting needle so the section is placed in silene for up to 24 hours to remove the remaining balsam and then brought down to water. For the histochemical staining, so this process is whereby various constituents of tissues are studied through chemical reactions that will permit microscopic localization of a specific tissue substance so the chemical ions such as calcium molecules such as bile pigments and biopoly polymers such as cellulose dna and specific enzyme are among the tissue components that can be identified using histochemical staining techniques for the immunohistochemical or IHC staining, this combination of immunologic and histochemical techniques would be using a wide range of polyclonal or monoclonal fluorescent labeled or enzyme labeled antibodies which detects and demonstrate the tissue's antigens. So example for this are R proteins and phenotype phenotypic markers under the microscope so that would be uh, the end of my report those I've mentioned are the methods for staining uh, the importance of staining and the procedures when we are doing staining which is very important in in the histo histopath section so that would be all i hope you have learned something from this report and thank you